First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Yamamoto for kindly inviting me today. And uh, drug discovery is one of the topics of this symposium, and I'm very happy to share with you some ideas how we should make the process of drug development more efficient and uh, rational. I'd like to discuss on this specific points by exemplifying kidney disease because my background is nephrology and uh, some speakers in the afternoon uh, chaired by Professor Sanei uh, appear to speak on kidney disease. Drug discovery in kidney disease suffers from suffers from several limitations. For example, lack of experimental animals close to human kidney disease. And a translation of promising idea to humans requires a target variation <coughs> in animal models. Unfortunately, animal models do not always mimic the human situation. The example of the NXY059 a drug developed uh, for the acute stroke is telling, despite positive results of numerous preclinical studies in experimental animals, uh, including mice, rats, monkeys, this compound eventually proved not effective in humans. But this conclusion should be taken cautiously. Our first ever individual animal meta-analysis. Meta-analysis not in human, but in animals. Um, uh, this is conducted uh, in collaboration with the British team, was based on the 15 uh, papers, studies, involving, uh, involving mice and rats and monkeys. And we concluded that this compound was effective in animal experiments, pointing to the limitation of animal data. In some drugs, uh, you see, its pharmacokinetics quite differs between humans and animals. When we inject uh, intravenously the, the same compound in mice, rat, monkey, human, you'll see the difference of uh, drugs pharmacokinetics among species. And uh, second, the uh, drug uh, discovery in kidney disease suffers, uh, uh, suffers from the absence of the validated surrogate endpoints for time-consuming pattern points such as renal death. So it usually takes at least a few years to evaluate the outcome of the uh, study, clinical trials in kidney disease. And uh, large trials with substantial human resources and fi uh, financial resources uh, uh, always required. And a uh, surrogate endpoint might shorten efficacy evaluation, but their validations remain a uh, moot in kidney disease. Rational drug discovery and efficient clinical development uh, has been at our priority. So let me ask ourselves uh, what we academia can contribute in this direction. What are our strategy, goal, framework, and status? I'd like to illustrate on this issue by uh, exemplifying our project to develop a novel inhibitor to plasminogen activator inhibitor. Pi one. These are three drug targets for kidney disease. Pi one, which I will delineate later in detail, oxygen sensor polymer hydroxylase, maybe uh, will be briefed uh, later in uh, by Professor Masaomi Nangaku, and uh, Kit one. If we inhibit the oxygen sensor activity, uh, we potentially promote the activity of the HIF and uh, uh, potentially mitigate the hypoxic injury. And if we inhibit the key plant, we can uh, mitigate the uh, 
tissue injury associated with the oxidant stress. Usually, conventionally, pharmaceutical industries, I think they identify targets, they launch high throughput random screening with large chemical libraries. <coughs> Unfortunately, we academia cannot access to these large chemical libraries, but we academia can less costly use in silico computer-based uh, drug design called SDD, uh, structure-based drug design. Indeed, uh, you relying on these technologies, we can identify uh, inhibitory compounds to pion oxygen sensor inhibitor and the KIPAN. This is in collaboration with the Professor Masaomi Nangaku, and this is a uh, collaborative study with the Professor uh, Yamamoto. Now let me focus on the PI1 inhibitor project. We screen our chemical library encompassing more than two millions of compounds. This is a virtual library. This number was reduced by several filter selection, size filter, uh, drug likeness filter, child filter. Then uh, these compounds are uh, evaluated by a docking simulation. Uh, whether to assess whether a compound is fit is in the pocket, active pocket of a pion or not. Then uh, we uh, identify 95 compounds theoretically and binding this active pocket of the human pion. We purchased or synthesized 28 out of them and tested their biological activities in vivo and in vitro. And I eventually identified the heat compound, uh, PM5007. Structural optimization uh, produced uh, a total of over 500 new derivatives of the heat compound. Uh, all of them were evaluated for their efficacy, uh, toxicity, and pharmacokinetics. And uh, we Get. Uh, we got the lead compound and the compound, uh, 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 clinical candidate compound. This uh, uh, compound is now at the phase one clinical trial. This compound has an ideal pharmacological parameters uh, in the monkeys. And with uh, three orders of man magnitude higher efficacy as compared to the heat compound. And the uh, heat compound needs 300 milligram per kilogram per day for the unthrombotic action. But you see 0 .03, uh, 0.3 milligram per kilogram is sufficient to achieve the unthrombotic actions. We invited experts on pharmaceutical regulations because we are not familiar with the pharmaceutical regulations. And we invited them to Tohoku University and conducted a full program of the GLP preclinical study. GLP is kind of pharmaceutical regulations uh, needed for the quality of the uh, pharmacotoxicological uh, studies in animals. And uh, we conducted analytical tests, genotoxicity tests, and general toxicity tests, and safety pharmacological tests by outsourcing to contract research organization, CRO, because uh, it's very difficult to conduct these studies in our university. And we synthesized an uh, investigational uh, compound under the GMP grade. GMP is a pharmaceutical regulation needed for the quality of the material for the clinical trials. We manufactured a tablet and uh, conducted some tests uh, needed for the clinical trial, leaching tests and the stability tests, etc. These uh, processes, uh, structural optimization, GLP preclinical tests, and a GMP, uh, all conducted uh, independently of the pharmaceutical industry and uh, in this uh, university. And uh, currently, uh, academia uh, can undertake the entire uh, development system of the drug discovery and clinical development. Uh, even 
with, for the first in human plus new drugs from the pathophysiological research to <coughs> validate targets and a fit compound identification and a lead optimization new derivative synthesis and a GMP synthesis formulation tablet and a GMP preclinical studies and eventual phase one and a two clinical trial by investigator driven clinical trials. Preclinical studies uh, with uh, Taiwan inhibitors uh, disclosed very interesting and applied trophic benefits of pion inhibitors. If we inhibit the pion, uh, it promotes activated plasmin and a fibrinolytic pathway. So it's very easy to think the benefit uh, on the antithrombosis. But the uh, potential of pion inhibitor was more than that. Inhibition of pion is involved in the hematopoietic regenerations. This is un not unexpected observations. And uh, when we inhibit the pion, it activates the TPA and the plasmin and the MAP9. So the activation of MAP9 uh, releases the sick ligand from the stromal cells, thereby promoting the hematopoietic progenitor cell uh, regeneration proliferation and the subsequent inhibitor repair <coughs> given to lethally early radiated mice, pion inhibitors uh, improved mortality. You see, uh, in this model, 80% uh, of mice die uh, after one week, but uh, those given pion inhibitors or TPA survive almost 7%. And uh, this phenomenon is uh, dependent on the increase of the white blood cell and a platelet. Even a few days after pi, uh, administration of pi one, you see an uh, increase of these uh, uh, cells. And uh, this, these phenomena uh, depend on the activation of the TPA and MP9 and a CP ligand. In another uh, models uh, of uh, mouse Hintley ischemia, uh, pyron inhibitors uh, prevented tissue necrosis by the endothelial repair. So more surprisingly, uh, this is a collaboration with a uh, Northwestern uh, University in the United States. And uh, pyron inhibitor retards the development of the synapses in the colossal mouse. Uh, cross mouse, uh, you know that uh, this mouse is characterized by the immature growth and a light, uh, short lifespan and uh, uh, abnormal uh, pathological age-related uh, you know, abnormalities in many organs, including kidney, lung, and bones. And uh, this mouse is also characterized with uh, enormous La la lays of the pyron levels in the tissue and plasma. So we cross breed with the pyron knockout mice or give pyron inhibitors in the cross mice. You see uh, cross breeding of the pyron knockout mice or pyron inhibitors uh, completely normalize the phenotypes, uh, lifespan, growth and uh, corrected all the abnormal uh, pathological changes in the kidney, lung, and bones. We don't know uh, the uh, mechanism uh, in detail, but here are some uh, answer. Cellular senescence restricts the cellular regeneration capacity and uh, produces a number of uh, proteins collectively called as a synapsense messaging secret form, SMS. And pyron is a uh, critical upstream factor, target of SMS. So switching pyron on or off uh, leads to the cellular senescence or regeneration, respectively. Novel therapies inhibiting pyron uh, 
might therefore uh, prevent age-related pathological changes and uh, as well as uh, uh, accelerate uh, new cell regeneration. We assume our pyrene inhibitors as open resources and uh, provided to many international researchers upon their request. And uh, thanks to their researches, we have uh, many uh, interesting applications of pyrene inhibitors and thrombosis, cell regeneration, and aging. Uh, furthermore, anti fibrosis in the lung, kidney disease prevention, and anti inflammation. So, pyrene inhibitors have several. Uh, potential clinical applications. An investigator-driven phase one clinical trial has just been completed here in Pohoku universities. And uh, we will uh, plan to start the investigator two phase two a clinical trials to test uh, the benefit of this compound on bone marrow regenerations in patients undergoing Hemotherapy or radiotherapies for uh, hematological malignancies, if shown to be safe and effective, we plan to offer this drug to many uh, research networks for further clinical evaluations in other indications such as kidneys. So, drug discovery and development initiated in academia might <coughs> extend. Uh, globally beyond its current reach because we can rely on the uh, international networks uh, covering not only from the base research to the investigator driven clinical trials. What are the keys to conduct the investigator driven clinical trials through international networks? Uh, unfortunately, I, I, I don't know, but uh, here are my suggestions, uh, high quality investigational compound under the GMP grade, as well as a reliable pharmacotoxicological data under the GMP grade are very important. With this, these open resources, we can bridge material data to globally to other countries and initiate uh, uh, investigator driven clinical trials in many countries. But unfortunately, we academic researchers are not familiar with the uh, pharmaceutical regulations. So we need to closely collaborate with the regulatory authorities. Uh, indeed, uh, we joined the human exchange program with the Japanese pharmaceutical regulator, uh, PMD, pharmaceutical medical device agencies. So uh, expert staffs from the PMD come to uh, my lab uh, quite frequently and uh, discuss how to develop. And uh, I think uh, international academic societies uh, has also an important role in this movement. When I sat as an executive committee member of the International Society of Nephrology, ISN, we have launched an advisory committee to raise standards in the investigator-driven clinical trials, not only in developed country, but also in middle and low income countries. The main causes of drug attrition have changed over time. 1991, poor pharmacogenomics properties were implicated in 40%. Now, the, uh, the main cause of drug attrition is due to a lack, a lack of efficacy in humans, uh, almost 30%. We may ask ourselves whether we can overcome these issues, reduce this time and cost, and accelerate new drug, drug development. Uh, we have a clue in these directions. And, uh, the, latest science and technology should be involved in the exploratory early clinical trials in academia. Uh, here are some of uh, the, our challenges. For example, uh, how to get efficiently, rapidly, the pharmacot 
kinetics. Pharmacokinetics is, uh, shortly speaking, what the body does to the drug. We can rely on the microdosing. Then we can assess the pharmacokinetics by a small number of investigational drugs, uh, usually less than 100 micrograms. And uh, to get uh, pharmacodynamics, pharmacodynamics is it is what the drug does to the bodies. Uh, we can get the pharmacodynamics by the bioimaging and molecular uh, biomarker and the molecular imaging technology. And the pharmacogenomics and the surrogate endpoints are also very important tools for the early clinical exploratory trials. Uh, due to the time reselection, I only brief some of them. Is it possible for us to evaluate early a drug's pharmacodynamics from blood or urine? Can we directly assess uh, tissue phenomena uh, in the kidney, uh, for, for example, in the kidney, inflammation, fibrosis, hypoxia? You are very much aware of the fact that we cannot do that uh, by analysis of the blood and urine. But the latest uh, molecular imaging technology may enable us to do it. Renal oxygen level is now visible by old MRI. This is a, a collab uh, collaborative study with the Professor uh, uh, Kiyomoto and Mori, who also are present in this room. A healthy subject is, was given one liter of plain water. You will see uh, a dramatic increase of the renal oxygen levels in the kidney. This is not the blood flow, this is the oxygen level. So your <coughs> kidney doctor recommends you to drink much water every day to protect your kidney. And uh, I radio labeled uh, non-toxic probe, f uh, FRP 170, uh, developed by the uh, team of the Tokyo University, is a more sophisticated approach. This uh, probe, uh, taken up uh, by the hypoxic cells, uh, combined with the PET molecular imaging technologies, assesses uh, visually in humans uh, the degree of tissue hypoxia. So if we develop a promising compound that can interact with the uh, uh, hypoxia, such as a uh, oxygen sensor inhibitor <coughs> uh, or a HIF activator, uh, what's the best way to assess its pharmacological action in the kidney is to utilize this kind of biomarkers as well as the molecular imaging technologies. And uh, experimental mice are homogeneous, so it's very easy to get the conclusive and the reproducible result. But uh, this is not the case with humans with heterogeneous groups, age, nationality, lifestyle, foods. It, cannot be, it can be difficult to predict who will benefit from a medication, who will not respond at all, <coughs> who will experience the side effect. Uh, the pharmacogenomics may enable us to predict whether a medication may benefit for specific populations and help prevent adverse drug reactions. Its uh, use is currently very limited, but our challenge is, is in progress, uh, uh, um, part, part, partly linked to the Kohoku Medical Megabank, Professor Yamamoto. For example, pylon levels in the tissue and the plasma uh, differ markedly uh, according to the genetic difference of the pylon gene. Uh, homozygotes, with the 4G allele have a higher pion levels as compared to those with the 5G alleles. Does this genetic difference affect the uh, outcome of the clinical trial, efficacy, optimal dose, and the toxicity? It, it is, should we change the dose according to the gene genetic difference of the pion gene? It's a very important question. And uh, the genetic difference of the metabolizing enzymes of, of our pyran inhibitors <coughs> should also be considered. Pyran, our pyran inhibitor 5509 
is metabolized by the CYP2C9. And the whole zygote with the wild type CYP2C9 is a normal metabolizer, whereas uh, uh, those with the mutant type CYP2C9 is a poor metabolizer. It's uh, of interest to recognize whether this genetic difference affects the outcome of our clinical trial. Therefore, we include the pharmacogenomics approach in our investigator driven phase one clinical trials in Tokyo universities and uh, uh, analyze all the genes, pi one as well as uh, pi one as well as the metabolizing enzyme six to C9 in all subjects enrolled. The total number is 120. With the, we are now analyzing the data with the hope that we utilize the data for the subsequent type phase two clinical trials. This is a kind of project now in progress. So let me summarize. Uh, innovation in kidney disease therapies is hampered, uh, as we know, by several limitations, uh, like, um, animal models, lack of biomarkers, you know, pharmacodynamics, and uh, lack of surrogate endpoint, and uh, genetic heterogeneities. Therefore, the clinical development have been and will be a lengthy and expensive process. It's high time for us to uh, make the process of the whole drug discovery and development process more efficient and rational by relying on the latest science and uh, technologies and uh, bringing together all the stakeholders academia, uh, industry, and regulatory authority, instead of working in parallel with literal interaction, so as to uh, overhaul the existing path of discovery and development. And I would like to special emphasis on, put special emphasis on uh, important role played by the uh, international uh, networks of researchers uh, covering from the basic research to clinical trials. Hope that drug discovery should evolve from serendipity to rationality. Thank you very much for your attention.